Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome to the Networking Rx podcast. I'm your host, Frank Egan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. Today, we have another great guest. As our ongoing subscribers know, often on this podcast, I will be sharing ideas, insights, and best practices for building those professional relationships and helping you excel at business networking. Occasionally, however, I will be interviewing subject matter experts. These are authors, speakers, thought leaders, social scientists. These people share their knowledge to also help build those networking bonds and professional relationships. Uh, today, I have with us Edwin Dearborn. He's on a mission to help uh, help practice owners and ambitious mm -hmm. business professionals attract ideal clients through proven referral, social, and influencer strategies. Um, he has written three books on the topics of branding, social media strategies, influencer marketing. His latest book is Referology. Um, I should say that better. It's not Referology, it's Referology. Referology, uh, yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> a different podcast. Yeah, um, yeah. We're not talking about CBD here. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But in it, he details proven methods to ex uh, exponentially grow your best clientele um, through referrals and uh, ties in beautifully to what we do. Um, and his mission began with just a simple question. How can practices and businesses grow w with highly effective and affordable re referral and social strategies? So, Edwin, welcome to the program. Um, Thanks, I, I do. I do love the title of that book. I've been kicking around a book called Networkology, um, really kind of delving into the science of why our relationships work. And there's a lot of research out there. Um, yeah. I've got I've got a whole binder full of stuff, but I haven't kicked it off yet. So anyhow, um, I guess tell me about you. I mean, I've got the bio here and that's great. But how did you get into this? Yeah, how did I get into it? Well, it's a long story, but I'll, I'll keep it really short. So my parents owned uh, some businesses when I was a teenager. And uh, when I was 19 years old, I took a class in advertising in Southern California, a place called Orange Coast College. And that class really caught my attention. I knew that this was going to be in my future advertising was going to be in my future. Now, this is back in the 80s when, you know, I'm 58 right now. So back in the 80s, advertising was placing ads in newspapers, yellow, yellow pages, um, flyer distribution. That typically what a small business did back then. So I took what I was learning, plus some books that I was reading, you know, like Positioning by Trout and Reese and uh, David Ogilvy's book on advertising. I just was fascinated. So I started creating flyers, handing them out, and we were getting business from them. People were calling. I was like, wow, I'm actually studying something and then I'm doing it. You're <laughs> and influencing I'm actually, the world. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're an influencer, right? Yeah, like people are calling off my flyer, you know what I mean? They're, so I was like, wow, this is something I can actually do and produce a positive result. Well, in 2008, a couple of things occurred. Number one, the world fell apart mm -hmm. financially. And so did my financial world, it fell apart. But then the emergence of Facebook, Twitter, Google, YouTube, all of this was like, oh my gosh, social media, you know, it's only for kids. I knew intuitively this is where advertising and marketing was going to go. And if I didn't learn it, I would become a dinosaur in my industry. So I found a friend who was making a boatload of money on advertising on, online when everybody was dying. So I showed up to his house and his name's Bill McIntosh. I was broke. I said, I need a job and I want to learn what you're doing. Because I see the car you drive, I see the home that you live in. You're you're doing something that 
nobody else is doing. So he gave me a job. And for three years, I worked in his company. We developed websites and did SEO. And, you know, back then it was obviously a lot different uh, social media. Sure. Video. But I cut my teeth on working with real businesses, helping them develop real marketing plans. And again, I was studying it and I was doing it, kind of going back to my roots. And I came to the realization that it was so fast growing, it left most people overwhelmed. So my job was to kind of simplify it into things that they could do. And that's my principle is I don't need you doing everything I need to find out where you're at and what you can do. And I got to get the small wins occurring because if I don't get small wins, then you won't, I can't get you to the bigger win. So if you can only do three pushups and walk around the block and that's where your exercise regimen begins, then do the three pushups. Don't worry that you are overweight and obese. We have to start somewhere. So when I take that approach with people, And it's a Japanese principle called Kaizen, which means small, continuous improvements. Mm -hmm. And I recommend that. That's what I do is I go, what could you do right now? What skill do you have right now? And they go, well, I know how to put things on Facebook. I go, good. We're going to get better at Facebook. And I work with them for two weeks and we start getting a little bit and they're like, wow, I'm getting more engagement on Facebook. I feel more confident on Facebook. Okay, good. Kaizen, what, what other thing are you willing to learn? Well, I do have an email database. Good. Let's take a couple months and get good at email. So next thing you know, six months later, they're like, man, I'm, I'm really kicking it on Facebook. My email is growing. You know, I'm starting to do live video now on Facebook and I'll go, okay, what what next can we do? Well, let's get a virtual assistant and have them help you on LinkedIn. And and we, then we look back a year and they're like, wow, I've got five core competencies of growing my network, generating referrals, getting more reviews. And, And that's really the magic of how to grow with digital media and referrals is what can I improve right now that you can do? That you know that is so smart because I know so many people who and I have a process with my social media. I've been doing it for years, and it's I tell people it's very anal. Um, yeah. And, but it's you know, but that's what's helped me become successful with it. Right. And they see it and they're totally overwhelmed. I could never do that. It's like, well, you can. You just can't do it tomorrow, right? <laughs> You there know. you go. Bingo. You can't do it tomorrow. So, and you bring up a great point, Frank. They look at they look at the enormity of it all. Yeah. And they get overwhelmed going, oh, I could never be that. And I go, yeah, you're right. To your point, not tomorrow. Yeah. How about a year from now? And this brings up a great question that you just made me think of. When I sit down with a, a new partner or client, one of the very first questions I ask them is how long do you think it takes to build a profitable brand? And, and they, it, they think about it and they're like, now I go, not just a brand. I'm not talking about a logo on a website, a, pro, a brand that is recognized, that's making you money and that you're happy with. And they go, wow, if you put it that way, I don't know, three to five years. I go, great. So let's map out your three to five years, quarter by quarter, how we get you to the next you know, look, look, I can't, maybe you don't, you're not Tom Brady and you can't throw the big touchdown with five seconds left, but we can get a first down. Yeah. We, you know, and in baseball, they call it small ball, right? You know, just get on base, just get on base. Yep. And if you keep getting people on base, guess what? Oh my God, we're getting runs. Yep. So no, it's, I, I think it's, um, well, it's, it's simply genius. Right. I mean, it's, it, it, you know what I mean? It's, it, it is simple. And I think for a lot of people, it's, they, they would almost think it's too simple, but right. it's, right. but it's just, it just makes common sense. It's just uh, totally. Um, the three hours of business growth, you, we, you know, I want to kick around those around. We've, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of talked to them before we hit record, you know, referrals, reactivation, reviews, um, 
let's just take those one at a time. Let's, you know, right. what referrals, that's key. Absolutely. So let me, on the three R's, everybody's got uh, some amount of people that they can influence. Okay. You know, when you get insurance business, they go, you know, list out your top, your 25 friends and family and call them and sell them a policy. Right. I'm right. doing the business. Okay. I mean, cause it works. You know, the insurance industry is a multi-billion dollar industry and they built it on that model. List out your friends and family. Good. So let's put them in a database. That database can be an email. I consider your followers on LinkedIn and social media. That's kind of your database. It's a sure. base of, of data. Okay. Are you telling people what you do? The people that you already know, Hey, I'm a realtor just, or maybe a story that you found about real real estate or an article that you found on Inc. Magazine on why real estate is a great business, whatever. You're just talking about and to the thing that you do and love. Because most people, when they have a database, they don't engage it. And there's an old saying in sales, the money is in the list. Well, that list could be your followers. Are you offering valuable information, insights to your database and talking about the problem and describing the challenges and how to overcome them? Just by exercising that to your database, what's going to happen is I know a guy and you're going to start getting referrals. So you have to be, to get referrals, you have to be referable. And to be referable, you have to be knowledgeable. You have to be seen as somebody who has expertise or skills about whatever it is. I don't care if it's, you know, how to make baby formula. Right. So the first thing that I do is I go, okay, we're going to take the existing data base that you have, the followers you already have. Let's not worry about where we're growing. Let's, and here's, as this, you know, it, the caffeine of social media is engagement. Let's start getting engagement, conversations going, likes, retweets, shares. You know, somehow people are interacting with you and the number of interactions will turn into the number of transactions. So how do we increase the amount of interaction? And here's just some simple things. Answer people's questions. Write down the top 30 questions that you hear all the time about your industry. Write the question at the top of the post and then write the answer or do a little live video. Hey, you know, the Edwin Dearborn here, a lot of people ask me, what does a virtual chief marketing officer do? Well, let me answer that in the next two minutes. And maybe I list out those 30. And over the next 30 days, I do videos or articles or posts, whatever you're comfortable doing. Some people don't like being on video, so write the answer. I like video, so I video the answer. And I'll do that over and over and over. And people go, hey, I've been watching your Facebook Live. I've been watching your YouTube videos. I think I need your help, and I got a referral for you. So the interaction led to the transaction. So how do we increase your interactions, your engagement? That will get you more referrals. And as you talk, I keep resonating the whole, the term small ball, right? I mean, it's just- Small it, ball. It, it, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just, get, just get on base. Let's have a really good post today. And I have a realtor that I work with in Beverly Hills. And he's like, yeah, I know. I, I, I probably should. I said, I said, Brandon, just, just, just say something. You know, hey, I'm at my new thing, whatever. Don't worry about the quality. I want you to just start posting more often. So about 30 days into the process, because the algorithms now sees him posting content and he's starting to get engagement, guess what LinkedIn does? It shows it to more people. Yep. Okay. So some guy he did business with about seven years ago now sees his post because A, he's posting. <laughs> right. He's doing something, Kaizen, small ball. And the algorithms are starting to see that he's regular and that there's some likes and shares. So it starts showing it to more people. And one of the people that he had connected with seven years ago that he did business saw the post. And he goes, Brandon, I'm ready to sell my house. And I remember you. Can we get together? 
So they, he now listed the home. His commission on that will be $30,000. $30,000 in revenue from just playing small ball for 30 days. And it hit him. He was like, wow. I said, yes, because your interactions led to a transaction. That's as simple as that. So there's how he got the referral and the business. Now, the next one is reviews. Reviews are just marketing gold. Now, we could call these case studies. We could call them white papers. You know, there's a lot of different names that we could put under the subject of reviews. But any restaurant or doctor or realtor or anybody who's got, you know, an actual brick and mortar business will tell you that if they've got a lot of reviews on Yelp and Google, they're going to get business from it. And in my book, uh, Referology, I call those soft referrals. They're not directly referring the restaurant to you directly. Hey, Frank, I went to a restaurant. You should go. But I'm leaving a review. And if those accumulate and I've got 500 really good reviews, guess what? People start finding, you know, how'd you find the restaurant? We found you on Yelp, saw the reviews. We're ready to eat the pad thai. Um, so when you deliver good results, one of the things I, I teach my clientele and my partners is right at that moment of the, you know, the win, the great moment of happiness, ask them, would you be willing to share that moment of happiness online? And they go, oh, absolutely. Well, don't wait for them to take an initiative copy the links and email it to them or have them leave the review right then and there. And I had a dentist in the San Francisco Bay area that when I started with him, he had maybe 50 reviews on Google. And here's the benefit of getting reviews, the other side of SEO. So the drill was patient comes out, they're sitting at the office, signing out, doing whatever paperwork or payment. And they go, how was your visit today at the dentist with the dentist? And if they were happy, they would go, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. They go, great. Can you say that? Would you be willing to say what you just said to me online? Nine out of 10, 10 times they would. So over six months, we generated over 100 reviews on Google by just capture the moment of happiness and then document it as a review. Well, guess what? Not only did he get more business from the review site, but his website ranking went higher because Google kept seeing the interactions on their own social media. So they went, well, if he's got so many good reviews, let's also pump up the website. Right. So then the website started to be fine more often. Now he's got a double, right? Just because, again, small ball, one or two reviews a day, we didn't notice a difference in one day, but six months later, we look back and now we're having the big win. Now, LinkedIn allows reviews or, you know, endorsements. So, you, you know, uh, TripAdvisor has those for hotels. So you got to think about it like, and maybe you don't leave it on Google, or, but you, you video it, you know, a case study, or you do an official white paper, but it, it'll adjust depending on the brand but get reviews and then repopulate those reviews and those case studies on your website and have that social proof. Small so, ball. Small ball, man. It's just all small ball. So let's yeah. talk about reactivations. And this comes back to, this is the third R, reactivations. Mm -hmm. Do you know that 70% of buyers of any product or service migrate from one brand to another not because brand A sucked or was bad, but brand A was indifferent to them once the deal was done. Mm -hmm. They forgot about them. They went, closed the deal, we're now done. So guess what happened seven years later? Now he wants to sell his home again, but the realtor hasn't been in communication with him for seven years. So guess what realtor he picks? the realtor that has been communicating with him or he just met at the moment of needing to sell the home. 
he sees an ad on Google or he runs into him at a, one of your business meetings or whatever, right? Right. And then the realtor that was seven years ago, why didn't you list with me? It's like, you know, I kind of forgot. I didn't know you were still in real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the monies in the list. Now that realtor had put that guy into a drip campaign, had made sure he was following him on social media and every week sent him market reports and videos on, you know, how to design a home, whatever, just pinged him over and over and over and over and over with great content, insightful content, even funny content, he would have reactivated that file. He would have reactivated that client and would have made another 20,000. Now, imagine if you're not putting out content, you're not getting reviews and you're not reactivating your brand in the minds of people, how much money are you losing? Well, it seems to me you're starting over, over and over and over again. Exactly. It's almost like you're on a hamster wheel and you have to hustle to get a deal and then the deal's done. And now you're at, you're at, you're, you're at right. school A and you got to hustle again. And now you're exhausted going, why do I have to work so hard to scrape by for a living? Well, I, you know, reflecting back on what you said earlier, it's almost interactions to transactions, interactions to transactions. That's right. It's, it's just a wheel. It's just, it's, uh, it's just a wheel. Man. Yeah, it's, it's a cycle. A wheel. Right. And most people don't put these into processes and policies. Like with the dentist office, it was just simple. Like the front office girl always asks, this is now part of your job. This is a policy and a procedure. See, there's a lot of things that people, they'll take notes, they'll go to conferences, they'll have these breakthrough ideas, they'll come back all pumped, but they won't put them in to systems. Every one of these things that I do, I try to put into a system going, hey, front office girl, you have to ask every single person how their visit was. And if it was favorable, you ask them to, for their email and, ask, you know, and send it to them and make sure that they document that as a review. That's now part of your job title. Because if I didn't do that and I didn't hound her to do that and follow up with her every day to do that, it would never get done. Right. So I break down every one of these things and I go, okay, how do we put this into the job title, the processes of the business? And it's, it, it's amazing how much business is being lost by just not asking for things. Like I, there's a egg, it's called Peg's Eggs. If you're ever in Vegas, I'll take you there. And they have the absolute best pastrami um, Benedict Arnold. It's a Benedict Arnold, or a, 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 you know, the um, Eggs Benedict, sorry, right, Eggs yep. Benedict, and they put pastrami on it. And this pastrami is just out of this world, and the hollandaise sauce is out of this world. I get, it, unfortunately, it makes me fat. I'm sitting there eating this, just having a great time. The waitress at that moment could have said, you know what, before you eat this, she's putting it down, if you take a picture of it, and post it on Instagram and tag us, I'll give you a free cup of coffee. Oh, wow. Yeah. What does the coffee cost? The 50 cents? Not even. Not even. It's water. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You get my point? I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, oh, you're charging me two sixty nine for a coffee. I get. A, I feel like I just earned two sixty nine. Right, yeah. Sure, I'll take a you know, pink, right, tag, boom, 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 boom. Imagine you do that 30 times a day, small ball, over the next year, you had 9,000 organic soft referrals, people tagging you. Right. Oh, by the way, Edwin, if you, did you love it? Oh my God, this is the best, this is the best pastrami Benedict Arnold I have ever had in my life. Great, would you be willing, you just took a picture of it on Instagram. Could you take that picture and then leave the, what you just said on Yelp with the photo or Google? Yeah, yeah, and I'll give you a coupon for 10% off your next omelet or whatever you come in for. Done deal. Okay. Now, after a year, I've got 1,500 reviews on Yelp with photos and, and Google My Business. And I've had 9,000 people tag me. 
on social media. What do you think is going to happen to that restaurant a year from now? Oh, they're going to, they're, it's, it's going to explode. <laughs> yeah. And what does that, what is that advertising and marketing cost? It costs 50 cents that you didn't make on the coffee. Right. And the 10% off, so you're going to lose $2 on the next purchase, but you're going to create a reactivation by bringing them back with the coupon. You right. just got a review. And now he's giving you a soft referral on social media. Now, right. can you imagine if a guy is opening a restaurant and he puts that as part of the process? Like every waitress... This is part of, you know, just go, hey, how was your day? You're like, hey, how was your meal? Great. Say that on Yelp. Great. Tag me. Let's selfie this thing together with the chef. Get creative and wild and crazy. The restaurant or brand that does that is going, to, they're going to have a line out the door going, I've seen so many people talk about your pastrami Benedict. I'm like, I'm salivating. I'll wait in line. So that's. That's really the key there is to take this small ball principle and then go, how do I actually put it into the duties and processes and policies of our company? And the brand that does that, they win. Sounds good. Let's uh, shift gears here as uh, kind of wrap up. What uh, you, you got the book out. What other things are you doing? How can people help you? How can they get a hold of you? Yeah. Those are, those, that's the key, right? Yeah, yeah. So I gave you a link on my ebook, um, Referology, so they can either download that for free by going to the link. And if they don't want to give up, because they're going to have to give up their email, some people don't like doing that because I'm building up my email list. Right. They can go to Kindle uh, and buy it for $1.99 because that's the lowest price that I think you can, I, I was allowed to charge the book for. So $1.99, I guarantee you're going to get at least one referral by reading and applying my book. The best way to reach me is on LinkedIn. That is my favorite business development social media platform for me. That's what works best for me. So if you just type in Edwin Dearborn, I'm most likely going to be the only one. Awesome. I really appreciate your time on this program today. This is great. I will get this link in the show notes. Thank you. And, and Frank, I really appreciate you having me here and doing the hard work that you are doing to get businesses to network and connect. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.